believe that I am the best person for the job of President of the United States. My unique talents give me the ability to be assertive and diplomatic at the same time. I'm a person who will spike the conversation, who will get politics rolling and stimulate new questions and new answers to our current political dilemma facing our nation. I believe I have a keen understanding of the economy and how to improve where we're at relative to other nations around the world. I believe that our goal at America's Third Party was to create a very strong platform in which would propel the American people forward with new opportunities and a new possibility of creating a better nation, a cleaner environment, and less war. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to America's Third Party. I'm David Sponheim. This is Freedom Friday. I've got my flag on today to typify what this is all about. And we wouldn't even understand freedom unless we tested the boundaries of freedom. But now we've got the extremely socialist, communist leftists in the Democratic Party trying to define what we can do and what we can't do. Sadly, there was a person recently who uh, did a blackface video in many years ago 15 years ago and it was used against him in Florida and I'm not gonna even make a big deal about it but he didn't fight them he could have fought them it wasn't like he was doing the blackface video at a principle like I did he did it because we thought it was a joke so he didn't really think it was gonna haunt him in his career but he's been pulled out of government and I believe that the blackface video that I did is the benchmark of freedom if we don't test our freedom of speech and I in no way wanted it in any way imply black people were anything at all I was merely doing an impersonation of Barack Obama which I could not have done in whiteface that is the limit and that's as far as you can go if with free speech and get away with it and I used that tool to bypass censorship that was put on me back 10 years ago the very same censorship that's being put on me today, preventing me from getting out to the media in America, preventing me from broadcasting a show to meaningful outlets and to getting into a real conversation about politics with various people in government. They don't want an honest man to run for president. They want somebody who's controlled, who's controllable. I would love to do another blackface. Bring it. Yeah. If, if Michelle Obama runs for president, or vice president, I'm going to do a, an impersonation in drag in blackface simply because I have that right. And in other countries, you don't have the right to do anything. And we're still standing up for rights here. Believe it or not, America is the last bastion of freedom on earth. We are still a nation, theoretically, 
that all men are created equal, and that implies women too. No other country has that credo. We do. And we have to stand up for that. Because right now, there are bag people in the street that can't even vote. We have 5 million people roaming the streets with no food at night. Three, literally one third of our veterans are homeless, starving right now, and Trump has done nothing. And now Trump has finally agreed to sign a waiver to allow a bill to pass to let our country run for an additional uh, 20 days. And remember I said that if they don't decide by the 25th, we've got problems? Well, they did decide the 25th is, is, is definitely the mark, and I was absolutely right when this country was going to re-engage the budget. But the House and Senate both pass a bill to reopen the government today, just like I predicted, sending it to Trump for his signature. But Trump didn't get what he wanted. He didn't get his $5.7 billion to build a wall. So he's still looking at He's still looking at the possibility of shutting down the country in 20 days on February 15th. So he just extended it. Meanwhile, it buys the Republicans time to build an emergency bill to fund. And now they're going to add more to it. Pork barrel spending uh, another 1.3 billion onto it to make it 7 billion for the supposed fence that he wants to build. Now, remember, the fence is my idea. The 1000 mile fence is my idea. The original fence idea was talked about during Ross Perot's time. Uh, Buchanan talked about it. I was talking about it during that time in the early 90s. Many people were talking about building a fence and we still don't have one. And I agree with Trump. We, de we desperately need a barrier to stop an influx of people that could come from Mexico City if there's a large earthquake. A large earthquake of 7.5 in Mexico City will send 30 million people into Nevada, Arizona, and California. They're not going south, folks. They're going north. I hate to say it, but we've got a situation to deal with. So Trump is right about this fence. It's a good idea. Hopefully he'll get the emergency funding for it, but hopefully he won't extend this even farther to create a, another chance to impose martial law on the American people to make or break our economy. Hopefully this next big knock is not going to be, you know, the Emergency War Act of, of 2019. You can only imagine what he's planning. Now he can do anything. He can react to Venezuela now taking on military support from Russia and the supposed missile that can go 27 times the speed of sound, which which Putin has already declared is, is his new weapon of choice, along with many others. He constantly talks about his weapons, much like Hitler talked about his capability. Putin is following in Hitler's steps, it seems. Okay. I I want to see that, I love fries. Don't make up fake stories here. All right. I haven't opened up the, the pro cams. Let me see if anybody's out there wanting to do pro cams. We'll open it up for you over at iBlog. And we got a few people over at, you know, Periscope watching, which is great. We post our link at third party on Periscope every uh, night on Twitter. We simply post the uh, the link to Periscope, which changes if you ever are on the road and want to catch our show. Maybe you're uh, trapped in an airport. Right now there's airports bogged down across the country. And that may have been one of the reasons why uh, Trump went ahead and uh, agreed peevishly to this whole thing. And he, he, remember, he said he wasn't going to bend on this, but here he is bending. So we have to assume that everything Donald Trump says is kind of hollow. That he's willing to flip on any any single issue. And I think you people who are somehow in your mind thinking QAnon is a real a real thing, believing that Donald Trump is somehow stopping the deep state, surely you realize that the deep state controls Donald Trump and that those sex tapes are probably real. So we have to be under the uh, under the, the caution that as a country, we could very well be facing a scenario where go our government's being messed with, that people have a goal, a, an ulterior motive here. And I call it the Russian plan. Yeah. What could the Russian plan be? To stop our government? To force emergency law? to force martial law, to, 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 to stagger our economy. I mean, Trump is doing everything he did back when he bankrupted 
when he bankrupted a bunch of corporations. Take a look at this uh, little 47 clip, that, 47 second clip that came out from Jason Sparks on Twitter. Let's watch this. He says this 40 second clip, seven second clip, explains how the president bankrupted three casinos. Watch this. Did you see Wilbur Ross said that he doesn't understand why federal workers need help getting food? Can you, can you understand? No, I haven't. I haven't heard the statement, but I, I do understand that perhaps he should have said it differently. Uh, local people know who they are when they for, go for groceries and everything else. And I think what Wilbur is probably trying to say is that uh, they will work along. I know banks are working along. If, if uh, you have mortgages, the mortgagees, the mortgage, uh, the folks collecting the interest and all of those things, they work along. And that's what happens in time like this. They know the people, they've been dealing with them for years, and they work along the grocery store. Uh, and I think that's probably what Wilbur Ross uh, meant, but I haven't seen his statement now, but he's done a great job, I will tell you that. Yes. I just want to know, aren't you worried? Yeah, so this is his mindset. He doesn't seem to care about the, uh, the, the after effect of all this. This whole charade of Donald Trump uh, using the wall uh, as a stumbling block in getting the budget passed has been, I don't have a problem with Lithuania. No, I'm okay with that. Yeah, thank you. It's been a stumbling block in our, uh, the entire wall has been a stumbling block in getting anything done. And uh, yeah, I, I really believe that at this point we have to assume that Donald Trump is not in any way really serious about helping people just like he wasn't serious about helping the people in his casinos when they died in a helicopter accident his response in 1989 when donald trump's helicopter went down this is still a story if you didn't know about it the trump accident occurred killing uh, three of his aides they were top top supervisors at his at his casinos and uh, he lost uh, these people, and the, the press asked him, "How do you feel about this?" His response wasn't, "I'm, you know, I have grave condolences for uh, their families. They were great guys. Nothing like that." His response was, "This is great press." That's a quote from Trump. "This is great press." Now, those three aides were going to testify in the collapse of his casinos. They were going to be actually going out and talking about what was going on behind the scenes. Like when he was charged with a crime by the New Jersey Gaming Commission, that his father went in and just gave him $3.7 billion, $3 million in chips to keep him afloat. The copper crash happened right after this. And then he said to the press, this is great press. Not, I'm sorry for what happened, not, not nothing. Everyone knew there was something wrong with this man then. This is the mindset of a liquidator, I'm telling you. He doesn't care if people don't get paid. He doesn't care about the outcome of, of any of his actions. At this point, I would have seen you know some results from Pelosi, but they're so full of themselves right now that they're gloating. Charles Schumer is gloating. Here he is today talking about, he mocks Trump. He says, hopefully now the president has learned his lesson. Democrats are firmly against the wall. Hopefully now the president has learned his lesson. Now, once the president signs the continuing resolution, we in Congress will roll up our sleeves and try to find some agreement on border security. We don't agree on some of the specifics of border security. Democrats are firmly against the wall. All right, you want a link to that video about the wall? Here's one link. And here's another link. Uh, yeah, this is another link about how Trump is behaving. Just like he lost his casino, it's the same thing. All right, so Charles Schumer is gloating. Nancy Pelosi's having a field day. They're going to sit back for 20 more days and twiddle their thumbs, not cut the budget, mind you, not cut the, the costs and overruns of our government, but kind of buy time, go on vacation, and wait for the whole thing to repeat itself. Meanwhile, Trump is building an Emergency Powers Act, which will be uh, claiming that there's some sort of emergency, even though there's not. There's no emergency at the border right now. He's trying to use that to declare uh, a need for a wall. It's just not going to fly. There's no emergency there. So is he going to create an emergency down at the border? Is he going to start a war with Mexico? I mean, 
what's going on? Mexico is in, in a troubled time. They're having a major leakages of fuel. We saw that ne nearly 90 people died last week in a terrible gas leak in a pipeline. They're, ne they're managing their fuel improperly. Mexico's facing huge problems. So yeah, we do need a wall. Is it an emergency yet? Not yet. They say we don't agree, but it's more like we don't believe in border security. I agree. And I'm, I'm with you Republicans on this because I like this wall idea. I think it's a great thing. It's the idea I came up with a thousand miles. I, I actually measured the area that we needed to cover. And obviously, obviously we, we could have had a big longer wall and people haven't realized the need for a, a certain size wall. Even B2 O'Rourke uh, had a video that was showed his lack of, of knowledge about the, the kind of wall we need. But when you look at the map, here, I'll show it to you. The uh, straight lines here are where the wall needs to be. Essentially, not, not the river, not down here. This is the river. The river would be ideal to have a, a moat like Meow TV suggested. That makes the most sense. Thank you. Yeah, so here you're looking at the mere possibility of a moat right here on, on the U.S. side is possible, you know, as a barrier. The river's right there. We could stock it with crocodiles. We could easily take the crocodiles from uh, uh, points east and put them right down there in the moat and, you know, and harvest the crocodiles. But this is the area right here that uh, we have to look at the straight lines. We have to build a wall. And this measures out at just under a thousand miles with a little extra to spare in case we need to fill in around the water right in here there's a couple of shallow areas we have to create a wall but the topography works the thousand mile total works everybody liked it michelle bachman used it Man-eating turtles are available. They're, they're developing a, a turtle that eats cadavers. They're thinking of using it in the Ganges. We talked about that last night. Believe it or not, the turtles eat cadavers very well. They dine on uh, the floating bodies in the Ganges River. And they're thinking, that'd be great, bring turtles in. But floating uh, cadavers, they probably dine on floating people too. You know, They have sharp teeth, yeah. Uh, we're not sure. Master Meatball is making something. Uh, oh, he's making candles. Master Meatball does his work in the evening. He He's financed his, uh, he's got a career making candles and it's working for him. He sells them online. Always staying busy. Right on, man. He's got these orders for candles that he, he, he does them himself. Look at that. And this is not easy procuring your own orders and packing them. So he's a real entrepreneur. Look at that. White Sage, he has scented candles. Isn't that awesome? And he's showing you people how you can make money at home doing this kind of work that he's developed a whole whole life of business out of this. Right on, Master Meatball. Yeah, you've done very well. Cool. All right, we're going to clear up the slate here and see what's happening. It start, The show started a little bit overwhelmed with this tragic another 20-day delay and no res resolution. We're just biding time here. We're biding time until the next catastrophe happens. So if this is the way Trump wants to run and and the glo the gloating Democrats, Pelosi and Schumer want to sit there and just be so proud of themselves. This is not a country that's functional. This is a, ja a completely joke of a country that has allowed these people to be so powerful and rich. In fact, Pelosi has $120 million in personal wealth. How the hell did a, a woman get $120 million by going to, to a job paying 200000 a year for 20 years? The only way that's possible is if she's taken money and bribes from people. So Pelosi's on the take financially. Everything says that she's sucking money out of corporate donors. Okay, now uh, the Atlantic is following up on that story about Trump and Don and Roger Stone and the WikiLeaks email leak and the whole thing. And so the Atlantic is saying, 
Roger Stone allegedly urged an associate to do a Frank uh, Pantagelli in reference to the Corleone family capo. Roger Stone's a very big mouth, so there's no telling he may have gotten involved on that, but Robert Mueller indicted him against Roger Stone. Randy Cardicho, person two in the special counsel indictment filed Friday against Roger Stone, secures his dog. Okay. I guess he was taking care of his dog while he was testifying. Special counsel Robert Mueller's indictment of Trump's longtime political advisor, Roger Stone, charges that Stone urged Randy Credico, the radio personality who Mueller has, says served as Stone's intermediary with WikiLeaks, to do a Frank Pantagelli and lie to the House Intelligence Committee rather than contradict Stone's 2017's testimony that he and Credico had not exchanged any messages during the 2016 presidential campaign. So apparently Roger Stone's big mouth got him into trouble. Hot water with Mueller. But again, I see all of this as a diversion. It's, yeah, I see it as a total diversion. Yeah, is this a Russian plan? I don't know. We know that Roger Stone was the intermediary on uh, a lot of the stuff that Donald Trump Jr. was doing on the WikiLeaks thing, so. But I think the WikiLeaks originated with Seth Rich, a young man who was killed, shot in the back, he lived through that, by the way. Seth Rich was killed, uh, and and no one really bothered to investigate the death, except for a few uh, websites. They've looked into it. They said that there was a witness, two agents, two government agents that killed Seth Rich. The person or, or people that would be most likely to have the motive to kill him would be the people that lost the 30,000 emails off of a flip drive. And we know that the emails came through flip drive because of the arithmetic code in the actual transmission. We know that the speed at which the, the files were created happened so fast it had to come from a flash drive. He's the only one who had access to the Awan brothers who were working secretly as internet hackers for Debbie Wasserman Schultz privately and for the Clinton campaign. We know that Seth Rich was the one who, who did this, yet his own parents will not even investigate. They, they said, I don't want to know who the, the killer of my son is. Now that's somebody who's been influenced, in my opinion. I think their parents, his parents have been told to, to back off. It looks to me like they're purposely backing off of this because Mueller has connections with the Podestas and God knows who else, uh, said Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the Clintons. They don't want to go after a Democrat here. They want to go after a Republican and nail him to the cross because this is a political move by Mueller. He's just hitting the underlings. He's not assembling a case against Trump because remember, Mueller appears to be deep state. And I think Donald might be deep state too because he's simply doing whatever he's told. So I guess we're into a situation that could evolve very quickly. Roger Stone goes back to the Nixon and Kissinger days, I know. How CNN captured a video of the uh, Roger Stone raid. Let's take you a look. You were there before sunrise this came as a surprise to you. It clearly came as a surprise to Roger Stone. Tell us what happened. Yeah, Allison, it was just after 6 a.m. when about a half dozen police vehicles, black cars with silent sirens came down this Fort Lauderdale Street. Nice neighborhood. Cars came down silently. And then about a, a dozen officers, FBI agents in tactical vests with heavy weapons fanned out across the front lawn of Roger Stone. Moments later, they were tapping at his door, rapping loudly. FBI opened the door. We saw a light go on on the second floor, presumably Roger Stone being awoken by those loud knocks on his door. Moments later, you're hearing it now, FBI warrant. Roger Stone appeared then in the doorway shortly afterwards. He was not wearing his usual attire. He's a, he's a nice dresser normally. He was in his PJs. And the FBI agent then confirmed it was him. The communication that we were able to overhear from the front lawn was minimal, but Roger Stone did say, yeah, I'm Roger Stone. And, and then now we know he was taken into custody and charged. And David, what happened? Could you see Roger Stone's demeanor? Could you see any sort of negotiations happening between the agents and Roger Stone as to how, if they were going to let him get dressed, if he was going to go in handcuffs, anything like that? Yeah, Allison, it, it was a wild scene and it all happened very quickly. So. When the agents fanned out across the lawn, they were, they were moving slowly, but urgently. 
when Stone came down within moments, uh, it was cordial almost. They had a discussion uh, and then, in fact, we were moved down the street. The agents came across the street while this was happening and moved us. So we were unable to see the whole interaction. We know that Roger Stone is no longer here on this street in Fort Lauderdale where he lives with his wife, but it, he was gone within maybe 30 minutes. So uh, depending on if that was a discussion or him getting dressed, we're unclear at this moment. But Roger All right, whatever. The guy was probably in his PJs, you know, totally taken off guard and that's what happened. So, oh well. CNN so proud of themselves, they got a picture of a man in his PJs. See what I mean about the CNN network? I agree with you Republicans. It's most of the stuff is so liberally biased. It gave us Barack Obama and the Iraq war and ratification of war. The, the, the Democrats have been very warlike and supportive of war and fake news. I agree. But so is Trump. Trump is supportive of, of war. He simply d doesn't seem to understand the benefit of pulling out of Syria right away. If he had really understood that, he wouldn't have left for all the people there. And now four people are dead because Trump didn't pull out of Syria, like I said he should do. He said he was going to pull out, but he didn't. And he didn't do it in an expeditious fashion. And, and four people are dead now. Hey, Zetterbird, you're in, man. He's got his, uh, he's got his uh, music on and right on. And then Master Meatball's in there. And then we've got the popper stopper in front of Zetterbeard's doing some professional communication there with his popper stopper. That's pretty cool. Wow. You got a pretty good mic quality there, man. That's awesome. Good for you. Yeah, that's cool. I can't get over it. He, 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 that's definitely the way to do it. And Master Meatball is doing his candle wax thing. So everything's going very well in our iVlog power. What's up, Davey boy? Hey, man. Yeah, we, we've got... We got definite things happening here. You, you got a good sound here. You know, many people don't know how to mute oh, their sure. mic. How's uh, Sarah doing? Is she feeling any better? Yeah, she's feeling uh, a little bit better to go to work today, which is great. Uh, I, I'll see her when she gets home. She should be home in about 20, 30 minutes. So hopefully okay, she'll that's be able good. to. If, she, her, if her voice is gone, I'm going to throw a movie on, and you guys are going to have me the whole night. Okay, all right. So, all right, cool. Thank you. All right, Zetterbeard's in the room hanging out Friday night. Everybody who works hard is relaxing. Those of you that work. He's looking good, yeah. I don't really care if anybody can call me anything they want. I don't have a problem with that. I was called Davy as a child. Yeah, Davy John. Davy, Davy was my name when I grew up, believe it or not. All right. Simply market law, no demand, no business. Yeah. We have a problem with the demand of drugs. I'm not, no, every single nation in the world has a problem with the demand for drugs. Drugs addict people. I mean, people become addicted to drugs. It's a natural progression. If you start taking a drug, you take more of it and gradually you become addicted. You're not going to stop that anytime soon. The rec recreational marijuana laws, if we make them all legal in America, which is what I've been hoping we do, and I've yet to see Trump make any moves in this direction. Uh, we will have a, a, a big growing economy and it'll help boost our, our national GDP. The idea of growing marijuana is something everybody could do when it becomes legal. So I'm officially pro-legalization, pro hempeline No other candidate out there, including the Democrats, are is open to recreational marijuana as I am. Across the nation, I will make it the first order of business to legalize it. But if we have more people producing things like derivatives, edibles, everything, we'll see all kinds of potential. And a lot of people are benefiting from how great it makes them feel without making them addicted. Because if Setter Beard's going to vape and have, you know, some smoke, it's not going to, he could go without it tomorrow and it won't affect him. There's no uh, residual effect. It's, it's, there's no physical addiction to cannabis. Yeah, weed the people, that's right. So, that's why I support it in, in a big way. 
I'm not going to just, you know, make it for medical use and go, oh yeah, sure. We're not going to allow that for personal use, but no, we definitely make, we want to green the country. Yes, I am the green presidential candidate. In case you didn't know, I don't have a democratic leaning anymore because I consider them bought off and they won't do what they need to do. But I could play both Neo and Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith. The Greening of America. Everyone about the smell of... No, the smell of marijuana is nominal when you're vaping it. You want to play Robert Palmer now? Addicted to love. Yeah. Well, I'll add that to our late night show. I can't play it during the show because they'll monetize me. But thank you. We'll play Addicted to Love at the end of our show. But we're here for a lot of other reasons that uh, may not be typically what you would expect of a, a political party. We're here for a lot of reasons that many of you don't understand you even need to have a political party. You don't realize the danger of overspending and how we've been running on credit for so long. And the dangers include this Federal Reserve that Ron Paul warned us about and how we continually get jerked around by a private bank. So another thing we stand for is bringing our troops home which and, and guarding the border with our troops and ending the Federal Reserve. And these are core elements of our party for about past 10 years. Ending the Federal Reserve and bringing their troops home go hand in hand because most wars, or in fact, all wars are bankers wars. So if the bankers no longer have a play in this, we won't likely start wars around the world expanding credit. Good thing. And unlike the Democrats, we've got all kinds of new political ideas building off of uh, renewable energy and the solutions that we have there like our vertical windmill I showed you last night. That vertical windmill could be a lifesaver. We could sell this all around the world. Get these things rolling. We'll have people creating energy everywhere. Wind is omnipresent. It happens all the time. The earth is full of wind. And you made a salad for yourself. That's nice. Stone cold, rainbow, stone cold. Yeah, we're not going to take all these Van Halen links tonight. Yeah, thank you. You can stop sending me links to music. I can only play two or three of them. Well, the debt to our Social Security Trust Fund was created by uh, many administrations. The biggest of all was Bill Clinton. Remember, they, the Democrats say, oh, we had a zero deficit when Bill Clinton was president. He borrowed from the Social Security Trust Fund to do that. And it's the largest chunk of national debt. Yeah, and it's, it's supposedly not going to pay for itself by 2030. Cyrus Vance uh, was interviewed about the debt and, you know, our former uh, chairman of the Federal Reserve, Cyrus Vance under Jimmy Carter. He actually said that the, the money in the Social Security Trust Fund will last till 2030. That's the best prognosis we have. So this is kind of what makes us different, but there's a whole lot more. We actually believe in a, well, I'll, I'll let my, my leader take off and show you what we were all about because obviously that tells everybody what we're all about here it is Okay, 
so we definitely uh, we definitely take on the big the big subjects like genetically modified food, vaccines, how bad they are when they're forced upon people quickly. We do things that the other two parties won't even touch on. We'll talk about chemtrails, the dangers of chemtrails. Nobody in the Democratic Party wants to talk about this stuff. Okay. Try that recipe. Yeah, the Master Meatball made a, a, a tuna fish salad out of yogurt and herbs and tuna and mustard. I've never made tuna fish salad out of mustard. You know, I, I hope you're using yellow mustard because they have turmeric in it. Whereas if you use Dijon mustard, it doesn't have turmeric in it. Turmeric is one of those life-saving uh, herbs that they say is equivalent to 20 pharmaceutical meds. A recent assessment on turmeric showed that uh, turmeric had a, uh, a huge benefit to longevity. I'm on turmeric. I, I take supplements. But turmeric, they call it. Okay, so you made some tuna fish salad, right? And you don't like mayo. I get that. Yeah, well, I've, I've never really had tuna fish salad without mayo in it. I've made it with just mayo because I've had to make it for people at times who are uh, lactose intolerant. Somebody lactose intolerant would probably not like the yogurt. Trump, Trump chose to sign Bill in a closed room with no other people. Yeah, it's a point of... Uh, I'm just reading up on turmeric. It's a point at which, you know, getting rid of uh, this nasty nuisance of caving in to Pelosi and moving on for the weekend actually helped the stock market. The Dow Jones went up 183 points today on closing. So it was a very, a fairly buoyant day on Wall Street. And I think Trump is realizing the benefit of being nice. So maybe he did learn his lesson like, uh, like Charles Schumer said, but I thought Charles Schumer was gloating. I think the Democrats are going to have to stop gloating because in a little while they'll have riots in the streets after another 20 days of Trump acting like he, you know, he's going to force people to do things. And then probably in installing an emergency act in our face, even though there's no emergency at the, the border right now. So freezing video going on right now. These are things that make us unique. And I think many of you, uh, fail to realize that unlike the Libertarian Party, which has a place in every practically every election, we don't have a place in any election. We've been kept out of the media. We've been censored. They desperately want to stop our ideas from coming to fruition. They don't want these things. They want our troops deployed overseas all over the place unnecessarily. They want to keep the Federal Reserve with a debt note to the World Bank. They don't want to legalize pot. It's too medicinal. You people will go off opioids. They want you to be on opioids, so you'll die of, of an opioid overdose like fentanyl. 65,000 people have died on fentanyl already. And they certainly don't want renewable energy solutions because the oil companies don't profit. The coal companies don't profit. So all of these things that we have here work against the very vein of mainstream media and mainstream politics because they're helping people. They've effectively kept you voting like a bunch of herded sheep and cattle into the two-party system without ever offering you anything new, without ever saying, hey, yeah, let's be kind of cool and offer legalization of marijuana for people in need. Let's offer a chance for our troops to come home and spend their money here in America as opposed to overseas. Let's give uh, the end, end the Federal Reserve and create an infrastructure bank and move forward with an idea that will help stimulate U.S. business. They don't want that. And they certainly don't want solutions to our personal energy costs, electricity going up everywhere. Now, we read last night that uh, PG&E is doing a lot of profit taking. It looks like somebody who owns or underwrites PG&E been, has been doing uh, what is called uh, inside trading. And I doubt the SEC is going to do anything because PG&E is now going into bankruptcy and well, the people that own PG&E, the Rothschilds, may very well be the ones trying to profit from all of this. Why would the Rothschilds want more money? Because it's an addiction. I have interviewed Jacques Fresco on our, on our show. Yeah. Yeah, I had a two and a half hour interview with Jacques Fresco in which uh, I talked about his his Venus project, and we really got into a good conversation. 
I'd give you a link to that, but it's on my Blog Talk Radio button on the old site if you want to grab it. Uh, but Jacques Fresco, let me just give you a simple statement about him. His ideas were revolutionary and futuristic. In fact, he had the idea of the flying wing at Northrop, and they went ahead and made Jacques Fresco. They fired him for that. Northrop fired him for the flying wing, if you can imagine. And all he did was come up with great ideas, one after the other, and he was treated like, like really bad. Here's Jacques Fresco. He died last year at 100 years old. Or two years ago now a year and a half ago. What the Venus Project proposes is an entirely different system that's updated to present day knowledge. We've never given scientists the problem of how do you design a society which would eliminate boring and monotonous jobs, that would eliminate accidents in transportation, that would enable people to have a high standard of living, that would eliminate poisons in our food, that would give us other sources of energy that are clean and efficient. When we understand that it is technology devised by human ingenuity which frees humanity and increases our quality of life, we then realize that the most important focus we can have is on the intelligent management of the Earth's resources. If you want a world without war, without hatred, with reduced crime, considerably reduced crime, then you must declare all of the Earth's resources as the common heritage of all the world's people. Anything less than that will be a repetition of the same cycle of problems. But there's no end to, to the possibilities which I think haven't even begun yet. The civilized world hasn't even begun to get off the ground. The jobs that will be accomplished in the future, the marvels, the technology to come is unbelievable. And it's about high time we get off our self-centered, self-seeking, self-advantageous designs and get on with the social job that has to be done, namely the reclamation of the environment and human beings as well. So we welcome everybody's participation. Indeed, everyone, everybody's crashing right now. Video is not loading over it. So if you guys need an alternative, go over here at Vaughn. Yeah. Go there. Keep your pop-out chat and hit the Periscope button. That'll get you into a show that'll run simultaneously with this one. Seriously. If you don't want to go to Periscope, you can also go to iVlog. Right. Yes, I know. It's very frustrating. Mark has been getting lots of money to keep people from getting in here. He himself admitted that he had 350 million VPNs banned on his site. Okay, so somebody said, I uh, guess 238 wanted to know about chemtrails. Do you have any solid information that would back this up? Yes, we do. Uh, 